This is David, WA9ONY. I'm going to talk about the high level components of a software defined radio. We have the antenna, we have the receiver, we have the computer. The antenna plays the most important role. It interacts with electromagnetic radiation that's occurring around us. It takes that electromagnetic radiation and it will result in electrons moving back and forth. That back and forth movement creates a AC voltage at the antenna connection. That AC voltage will depend upon what frequencies and it's a sum of all those frequencies that is occurring right now. At one point in time there's only one voltage. As time moves forward that voltage changes and it alternates positive and a negative. And that goes through the coaxial cable up to the end to be connected to the receiver. The important thing is there's two sides. There's a center conductor and the shield. Just like a battery, if we uh, only connect up one pole of the battery, nothing happens. Same thing with antennas. You need both connections of the antenna to see the voltage at the input of the receiver here. This is a SMA connector which is a very high frequency connector and it's also very small which is advantage to our receiver. This voltage comes in at the input and at the output is a stream of digital numbers. This stream of digital numbers is called I and Q. So we got two numbers I and Q and the stream of numbers happens at a data rate called the sample rate of the receiver. And we'll take for example one mega samples per second. One meg means one million samples per second of data is flowing from the output of our receiver to our computer. We take that data when it reaches the computer using different software and we can listen to radio stations, we can see the spectrum like a spectrum analyzer, we can do experiments with GNU radio and demodulate different types of modulation. There's a whole world of exciting things in radio technology that will occur here now. Back to our receiver. Our receiver has this task of selecting, in other words, a range of frequencies to be demodulated into IQ. That means that there's a tuner chip here. That tuner chip has a range of approximately 24 megahertz to 1.7 gigahertz, a very wide frequency. But this is up where we have the FM broadcast band, we have 6 meters, we have uh, amateur radio, we have two meters, one and a quarter, 70 centimeter amateur radio. There's a variety of different frequencies that can be explored. With quadrature demodulation, we are not stuck with just listening to FM or AM or phase modulation. We have with IQ data a stream of data that the demodulation now is done in software and that's what makes it very flexible. Traditional analog receivers are designed to only use for example FM on the FM broadcast band. That's it. Well this little device here provides a much more flexible data which is the IQ which then goes to our computer and then the software can decide the final decoding. Is it an AM signal we want to listen to? Like an aircraft signal? Is it a FM signal from a 2 meter amateur radio operator? Is it a NOAA weather signal listening to a NOAA broadcast? And so forth. The other thing is that besides the frequency coverage we also have what is the resolution of the number? I and Q. I and Q are 8 bits 
in this case. Some SDR receivers have 12 bits, some 14 bits. The higher the number of bits, the greater resolution of being able to see small signals in the presence of large signals. So they have the capability when I have this voltage here and I have a large, let's say, strong signal from a 100 kilowatt FM station and I have a weak 2 meter amateur radio signal from a repeater far away, the receiver with the higher bits in the IQ data will be able to detect the fainter signal in the presence of that stronger signal. So we have frequency range, we have sample rate, and we have the number of bits for the data. That and fundamentally are the three key specifications of determining the feature of our receiver. Now the data comes into our computer here. Our computer has got to do the workload of processing that stream of data. For example, if it's one mega sample per second, that means I get two numbers, both eight bits. It really means I got two mega bytes of data constantly coming in. And I have to process that so I don't drop out data and I don't have distorted audio or decoding a slow scan TV picture or whatever. That's the important thing is that the computer's got to keep up. The Raspberry Pi 4 here is exciting because it came out this summer in 2019. It's a 1.5 gig, in other words gigahertz. And the amount of RAM it has can be one gigabyte 2 gigabytes or 4 gigabytes. This happens to be a 4 gigabyte model. So that information, that capability of this device makes it a reasonable powerful what we call single board computer. The other key factor is that it's low price. So 1 gigabyte is still $35. 2 gigabyte is $10 more and the 4 gigabyte is $20 more. So for $55 we have our computer and we do not have to tie up an expensive laptop or desk machine in order to use our receiver here for software defined radio. This is David WA9ONY 73 and QRT.